favorite movie. You can only watch one movie for the rest of your life. You can only come back to one. What is that movie? Meet Joe Black. Well, that was quick. Were you prepared for yeah. this? Were you prepared for this? No. I, I've been at, I haven't asked that before, but okay. yeah. What is it about Meet Joe Black that, that that's your all-timer? Uh, cinematography, uh, the actors, uh, the, the film score is amazing for that. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. I'm trying to remember it and I can't recall. It is with Brad Pitt, correct? It is. And it wasn't like, crazy popular either, yes. but it, it's one of those movies that, that it ends and you're just like, oh, like, it makes you think about life. Okay. I don't know. It's okay. really, yeah, it's good. Awesome. Awesome. We are indeed live on YouTube. I can confirm this. So we'll get this started. Thank you all for joining in live. And for those of you watching after the fact, thank you as well. I'm here with Nicole Ashley, Canon ambassador, wedding and portrait photographer. And she has some remarkable work. You have to check it out. I got her social handle in the lower third there, but we're going to be talking about her journey, her craft, lessons she learned along the way, the gear that she uses and more. So with that out of the way, Nicole, how are you doing? How are you doing in the midst of this pandemic? I'm good. Um, I'm as good as you can be. It's uh, a strange time to be a business owner and let alone a photographer or a wedding vendor at this period of time. But Overall, good. <laughs> That's good to hear, good to hear. And, and, and a newborn as well. And listen, we're happy to hear that the family's healthy, that the baby's healthy. So that is fantastic. I'm going to pull up your Instagram page as well as your website. But while I do that, can you just tell us about the work that you capture and the type of style of photography that you do? Yeah, I'm a portrait and wedding photographer. Um, I would say the style is more of... Uh, romantic documentary um I always hate putting a label on the style because it feels like you have like an ego when you're talking about it but um yeah I, I I've been shooting full-time for eight years and ever since I started I think my style it although it has evolved uh my even my early work still the style mimics uh what I'm shooting today so that's pretty cool that that kind of happened pretty quickly Listen, I'll tell you, I'm glad you use the words romantic documentary because I think that's perfect for the type of shots. And I'm showing people the pictures right now. And you see a lot of this story in your images, right? Even the typical scene you'd see at a wedding, you capture it in this way that really feels like almost a documentary where it's uh, almost effortless, but it's, there's beauty in that. Uh, I have to ask you, how did you sort of develop this style? How did you get to this point uh, where you knew the type of way you want to capture these weddings, these portraits? Um, I love photographing couples on their own with no one around. So I try to bring that into weddings as much as possible, which I know it's hard because weddings are full of schedules and typically tons of other people right, right, and right. you're on a tight timeline. So the, uh, I would really focus on photographing couples by themselves and getting that really intimate documentary feel and trying to incorporate that into weddings. So I think a lot of people or a lot of other photographers ask about posing and direction and how to bring that into wedding work. Um, and I simply like, I, I act like no one else is around and yeah. I, um, I am very, uh, I am directing the scene the entire time I am working with clients. Yeah, and when I looked at your pictures, when Canon reached out and they sent us a list of names, I you know did a deep dive. I looked at your work, and it looks, you know, as a photographer, you can look at these things and you can see the foresight and the thinking and the art direction that you would think as a photographer to get these shots. But they come across as so effortless and and, and beautiful in that way. Let's go back to when you started, right? Now, how long have you been you know practicing photography, and then when did you actually start doing it professionally? Um, so it, it's been a hobby for years. Um... Uh, I was, I actually finished my degree. I was going to be a teacher. And I, while I was working on my degree, I was kind of shooting for fun here or there. And then, as you know, with social media, I would photograph some things for friends or for families just because I was enjoying it. And I would post it to social media. And then their friends or family members would be like, hey, like, how much would you charge for this? Uh, I never thought it could be a full time career. Uh, but uh, I, I did take on some sports photography randomly at the wow. beginning and it got really busy and that transferred into photographing events and music and concerts. Uh, so festivals and all that kind of stuff I was doing for a while. Right, right, right. But um, they were fun at the time. But what I really enjoy is working with people. Mm. Um, 
So that stuff was fun, but working with people more intimately, whether that's uh, like more like intimate couple shoots, portraits, and obviously weddings is where I prefer. So you eventually, you start doing this, you start getting gigs. When did you realize that wedding and portraits, like this was your jam that, you know what, I'm not doing these sports. I'm not doing concerts. This is where I yeah. want to build my lifestyle. Um, it actually happened again, pretty organically. Um, my sister's friend was getting married and they were like, Hey, like, I know you shoot these sort of things. Uh, would you want to photograph my wedding? Right. And it's all, it almost worked out, uh, for me in a better way because I was so naive. I was like, Oh yeah, like, I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, but luckily I did a second shoot, a wedding right before that, just to say like, okay, let, let me make sure I have my ducks in a row because you can't really do it again. Right. And I realized how hard weddings are and how much work it is because you have to be a portrait photographer, a landscape photographer, a family event photographer all in one day. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I did this um, for my sister's friend and it just took that one wedding and I was right. hooked. Right, right, right. And, and eventually you started doing a few more. You started marketing toward that direction. Yes. What eventually allowed you to go and make that full leap where, you know what, this is not a side hustle. This is not a summertime thing. I'm going to do this full time because there is that point where you have to decide uh, when was that totally. for you and how did you get there? Well, when I finished uh, university, the teaching market wasn't really great, mm-hmm. um, which obviously now was a blessing in disguise. So I was serving while shooting photography here and there. And my boyfriend, now husband, uh, really encouraged me. He's like, why don't you give it like a year and just try and just right. see what happens from it um, and convinced me to quit serving. So like, I had all my eggs in one basket and I had to work hard to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, knowing I didn't have that like backup job to rely on um, really forced me to put a lot of effort into it. So within that year, I was up and running. And ever since then, I've been full time for eight years. And I have to ask this, was this, because uh, especially in this day and age, you know, people can, you know, really hit it big on Instagram, even if they build a little bit of a community with thousands of people, that can sort of lead the business or some people will invest the business side and then eventually kind of invest in their media presence. So at that time, were you sort of like, okay, I got a good Instagram audience here. Let me go and build this business. Or was it the other way around? No, I was kind of late to the game with Instagram uh, for using it for business. Um, I had an account, but I was only using it for personal use. Right. And it wasn't until a bride was like, oh, um, like post it to Instagram or tag me on Instagram. And I was like, oh my gosh, my like lame <laughs> Instagram account, <laughs> like my personal one with my friends. <laughs> but um, uh, even that interaction, I saw the power uh, of social media with clients. Right. And even if you go back into my early Instagram, I've always integrated business with personal Um, and there is a fine line with it for sure, but, um, I'm so glad I did start doing that because social media is huge for artists. Yeah. Amazing. And you know, again, uh, for people watching, none of this is rehearsed. I'm just asking her off the cuff. I find that interesting because so often people might put social media as an obstacle that I need to do this before I can get clients when that's absolutely not the truth, right? No, not true at all. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So looking at that first year where, and I love the story where you didn't have a backup job, you had to get good at this and you had to get good quick. What do you yep. look back on and like, you know what? The things that I did here are what really allowed me to be successful in that first year and carry it forward. What were the things that you um, really exercised during that time? Uh, so it's it's interesting because I think what helped me also um, started to hurt me in the long run. And I'll explain that. Um, when I was eager to get shooting, I, I would say yes to any job possible just because I wanted to be busy with my camera. Right, right. So I would say yes to families. Um, to any kind of event, to commercial work, um, anything out there and stuff that perhaps I didn't love or I wasn't, I would even say fully qualified for just because I wanted to be busy with my camera. Um, And even though that that did get my name out there, um, I I was kind of doing too many things at once and I wasn't focusing on the things that I was really strong at. So where I was taking certain commercial jobs or um, even family photography, where I'm way more strong um, with portrait work or wedding work, I was too busy with stuff that I should have 
let it go and specialized in. So if I could go back in time, uh, even though that helped me at first, I wish I would have specialized sooner because I think I would have propelled faster in my career if I did so. Interesting. So do you, in your opinion, again, there really is no right or wrong answer. Do you believe that you would have rather go back and specialize really, really early? Or do you think that having gone through that, that may have added you to have a better perspective on what you love? I think in the beginning, because I think it's important to try to photograph quite a few things to see yeah. what you're really good at. I think a lot of people assume it's one thing and it may be another. Um, and again, like I started off with sports photography. Like now, <laughs> that's definitely not my niche. Right, um, right, right. But uh, it, it did allow me to really think about what made me excited to pick up my camera. Right. And that was working with people. Um, and even when I would photograph um, these different sports games, I would use long lenses and focus on shooting like portraits of the players and it's funny because they would be like hey like that's a great shot but we need you to like get the game <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so um even though yes that's great in the beginning I think every artist should play and uh try photographing different um arenas and seeing uh where their skill set kind of aligns right. but I do think once you know what makes you hungry to pick up your camera, then you should specialize and, and market towards that. Amazing, amazing, fantastic advice. And I have to ask you, because every creative I imagine thinks about this and you know almost might struggle with this, is getting better. You know, When you started off, yeah. you were probably thinking, okay, how do I get better? How do I get better? Because you want to differentiate yeah. yourself. How did you get better? What are the things that you did to improve your work in your eyes and allow you to thrive in this environment? Uh, well, the first thing, uh, that I would tell anyone is the best advice is pick up your camera as often as possible. Uh, don't wait until you have the work. Um, I, so that would, meant I would get family and friends to model for me. I would shoot at different times of day. Uh, things that would scare me, like working with artificial light, like I would practice with that. Um, so putting myself in uncomfortable positions, working with people I didn't know, putting myself out there, uh, that kind of uh, forced me into... Um, that arena there but uh yeah i think picking up your camera shooting as often as possible um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh and advertising yourself properly on online and social media for sure nice nice i i, I love that i mean you know to bring in the sports analogy here it's about putting in those reps in the gym before yeah. before game day right where you're really going out and taking it seriously and you're not waiting for the wedding to get better Right. right. What are you doing in the off season? That's fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of people too who say like, oh, because uh, I mentor a lot of other photographers and they'll say, hey, like I'm posting online, but I'm just not getting the work. Um, yeah. And then I'll, I'll tell them like, okay, then you need to create it. You need to um, set up a styled shoot. Uh, you need to photograph something you love for the fun of it and advertise it that way. Like there, there are things you can do to bring in the work. It's right. not always just going to come to you. Right, right, right. Let me give you a hypothetical situation because I love doing this during the stream. Uh, let's say, you know, I, I know that I can take a pretty decent portrait. I now want to start a wedding photography business. How mm. would you direct someone in this day and age? Where would you tell them to invest their time, energy, and resources if they were looking to get started, you know, with a modest amount of talent? Where would you guide them? Uh, well, I would tell them, um, what I didn't touch on then that I meant to was that I also am where I am today because I invested in learning from other photographers as well, mm. whether that's doing creative live classes, um, going to workshops, um, going to workshops, uh, especially physical ones were really awesome because it allowed me to meet a lot of other like-minded artists, right, um, right. and put you in new locations, especially if you're trying to break into like destination photography where you can get that portfolio. Right. Um, but if you're if you're looking to stay local, uh, even reaching out um, on Facebook or finding different referral programs that um, or sorry referral groups where you can reach out to other artists and offer your second sh uh, shooting services. Uh, mm. I learned a lot just from uh, shadowing and second shooting for other artists too. 
Yeah. Amazing advice, right? Because there's already a ton of successful wedding photographers and they're yeah. always looking for a backup and a backup's backup and a backup's backup's backup. So totally. You can never have yeah, networking <laughs> with them. And, and again, like you said, those live events is a great place to try and network with them and introduce yourself, right? Uh, and listen, yeah. uh, elephant in the room, Canon helped put this together. So shout out to Canon. And this is not a shameless plug. I got to call it out because they put on a ton of workshops before this whole COVID situation, uh, whether it's their creator space, uh, whether it's Socality, they pull out on some great events and allow people to meet up and connect and they're doing stuff online where you can join in so whether it's canon canada or socality or even nicole ashley be sure to follow them we're going to touch on that later be sure to follow them so you know when the next online event is happening that's that's fantastic stuff um and with that i got to talk about the gear so when you got started and before canon knew how amazing you were you were on your own you had to kind of build out your kit uh what was those first cameras first lenses what were you looking to collect as you looked to build this business out uh, well, I started, so I started off with the Rebel T2i, which oh, right on. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even know if that's still around, um, <laughs> but it, like, I, it was a great camera. Um, and, I what I would do because I was super poor <laughs> when I started and camera gear is expensive. Of course. Um, I would rent different lenses and see how I, I felt about them and to see if they were the right fit for me and what I was shooting at the time. Right, right. So I, I had that body and the first lens I ever bought after renting it was the 2470, the 2.8. Um, uh, yeah. And it's a great all around camera. And even now if um, new artists are out there and they're like, Hey, look, what kind of lenses should I be trying out? I always tell them my favorite is the 50. Right. Um, uh, and I know like, especially like the newest 50 from uh, the EOS R mirrorless uh, camera yeah, line. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's steep. I know. <laughs> so uh, I tell them like, it's a gorgeous lens. Uh, if, if you can invest in these things, great. If you can't rent them, but I always tell them the 50 focal length and the 24 to 70 are really great. Um, uh, kind of covers your, all your bases yeah, for, for yeah. art. And that's great business advice as well, right? Is to put yourself in the position to be successful and do more and more shoots. You don't want to be going into crushing debt where you can't even practice your yeah. craft a few years later, right? I think so many artists do that. Um, I know even when I first started, you think in order to be considered a professional, you have to own all this crazy amount of gear yeah. and people go and they buy everything. Uh, and you just, you really don't need to do that. It's better if you take it slow uh, play with different, um, cameras and figure out what works best for you. Um, for me, I always knew, like I've been shooting Canon forever. Like even when I had like the little like pocket camera <laughs> it was, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, shot. Um, but I have, uh, just because I, I take my craft seriously, I have played with Nikon, uh, Sony Fuji cameras and I just, I always go back to yeah. Canon. So, um, uh, but with lenses, especially, uh, there's so many lenses I've invested in that I'm like, okay, I haven't touched my 85 in a year right, that right. you got to make a call what works best for you. So let's talk about the kit that you have right now. And I'll move on to why you still choose Canon, you know, with all the yeah. work that you have going on. But, uh, right now you have, uh, an US R and a 5d Mark four, four. And yeah. with that, I got to ask you, what are the top three lenses? If you could only take three to a wedding day. Because uh, I, I don't want to say anything for you, but I imagine you're taking a lot more than three. But if you could only yeah. take three, what are those three lenses? Okay, so definitely the 50 okay. for either camera body. Um, the 50 for the mirrorless uh, is insane. It's the most gorgeous lens I've ever worked with. Um, it's so buttery. I, like, I can't <laughs> even express how good this lens is. Um, uh, so definitely, uh, the 50 for either, uh, camera, um, a 24 to 70, just cause it's such a, a great, like, um, uh, a, gr a great focal length working for events, for weddings, for needing wide and a, a zoom when you right, need it. Right, right, right. Um, and depending on the wedding, I do shoot a lot of smaller weddings, elopements or like adventure yeah, kind yeah, of weddings. Yeah. Um, but if I did have I'm, like a big wedding or uh, a wedding setup that uh, was in a building that I might need to be further away, right. um, I would bring 70 to 200. Um, but if I wanted more of like a fun lens, my, I know this is four, um, <laughs> it would be my uh, 45 millimeter tilt shift. A tilt shift lens. Okay. Hold mm -hmm. on. Hold on. 
Yeah. Why on earth? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Why really? Why on earth do you bring a tilt shift lens? I really want to know because this is, oh. this is where the conversation gets interesting. I love a, tilt, a good tilt shift. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can always tell when people fake it online. Like, yeah. I can tell. I'm like, oh, that's an actual tilt shift lens. Like, it's Amazing. so nice. So, I, you know yeah. what? I brought up your shots before, but there's a couple of shots where you see this interesting flaring and depth of field trickery. That yeah. is a tilt shift lens. Oh, my God. The, especially if you want really cool um, sun flare, uh, right. the tilt shift will give you beautiful light if you get, like, really nice, like, a sunset or sunrise for those of you watching that's a gem right there so even oh if you're it's not so good it, yeah if you haven't tried it try the 45 try tilt shift tilt yeah shift. i'm writing this down okay I, i'm bugging yeah, my it's I, so good. i'm bugging my canon reps after this to let me borrow this for a little while amazing, yeah amazing um listen with with all the like the great thing about a creator is that we have choice there's tons of manufacturers out there tons of camera choices and each one has its strengths right and you choose canon even before they knew about you and before you yeah. were an ambassador for them you chose them and even now you still run a business and your business relies on you being able to put out amazing work and you choose canon so i gotta ask you why do you choose canon why do you stick to them and why is it part of your business uh it's the file quality um mm. the the file quality the skin tones that their lenses produce um at like the the glass on the lenses uh there's so many different reasons and if it wasn't um enough that the i love the gear itself um I, i'm so proud to be an ambassador of canon's like they're such a incredible company and they love their artists and they're always going above and beyond to promote their artists and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're as you know with socality they're um, offering amazing workshops sometimes for free sometimes for like ten dollars yeah. um, they're always putting out online education i just i really respect them yeah. as a company Amazing. And it's, it's great when it all lines up where, you know, from, you know, a moral standpoint, but also from a technology standpoint, yeah. everything lines up with, you Yeah, know, even if they were jerks, I would still choose Canon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love the gear. This is both, that's the tagline for this episode. Quality so I, good, you'll still use it if they're jerks. There you go. There you go. But, but it's they're such not. a bonus that they're not. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. And guys, I will say, if you have any questions, there's a bunch of you watching on YouTube, let me know in the conversation. I'll make sure to ask Nicole about this. Um, uh, I have to ask you, you know, uh, we're all going through this COVID-19 situation and creators, especially all across Canada are going through this all over the world, really. Um, and being yeah. a wedding photographer, your business is changing. So can you give us some insight into what's happening with respect to your business uh, and some of the things that you're looking to do to navigate this pandemic? Well, um, after, like uh, here in Alberta, um, they just put out the news that uh, there, the new restrictions are that there's no large gatherings or gatherings up to 15 people. So obviously that affects like 90% of my weddings. Um, so I, I've spent the last few days emailing and talking with clients um, right up until October, almost like 90% of my weddings were postponed to next year. Right, right, so, right. No cancellations, um, all postponing, but um, I still have clients kind of scrambling for dates because my 2021 year was already pretty booked. Right. So now I'm kind of doubling up so that I can get uh, fit all these other clients in too. Right. So this year it's going to be a really strange summer, not really shooting. Um, and then next year is going to be like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, with all these dates being freed up and, you know, with weddings, it's difficult to like change your mind and go back, right? Where it's like, oh, you yeah. know what, you know, even if the restrictions uh, let up. So I have to ask you, what are you looking at to do with this sort of reclaimed time? Now that you have a little bit more weekends, um, how are you looking to direct your, you know, your time, your energy, your resources? Oh, I'm just going to be like partying it up. Just kidding. <laughs> I've been newborn. <laughs> I... Obviously, um, I was like, I, I was super eager to go back to work, yeah. but I also know, um, for me ha having a, a baby right now, the silver lining is that I get so much more time with Charlie. Right, so, right. um, going to be focusing on family and usually every summer, uh, like I, I shoot a lot of weddings away. So 30 plus weddings, uh, plus them being away. I, right. I don't really get a summer with my friends. There's right. the odd like barbecue or a friend's hangout that I get to make. So 
uh, depending on what these social distancing restrictions are, I'm hoping that I can at least uh, get more time with friends, um, hopefully uh, create more work for fun. I'm still nice. offering a lot of like online mentoring, um, but it'll it'll look like a very different summer. I mean, that is the life of the wedding photographer, right? From spring to fall, those Friday, Saturday, Sundays are already eaten up, whether it's the morning, oh, wedding, yeah. evening reception, that sort of thing. You don't really get that wedding. So you know what? I look forward to you enjoying that with your family. Uh, let's yeah. talk about these workshops and events because you put on a bunch of this stuff uh, and there's one coming up in May, I believe. So where can people find this and who are you working with on this? So I'm working with Canon and uh, the fun people at Socality. Nice. Um, we did an in-person one and it was so much fun. It was awesome. So uh, just because or in light of like this pandemic, we wanted to offer an online one. Mm -hmm. We are eventually uh, going to do more in-person workshops, which is super exciting. But obviously we have to find online ways to, to do this. Um, so we don't have any solid dates yet, but it is going to be in May. So if you're following Canon, myself, or um, Socality, you'll see updates for it. Amazing. So again, make sure to follow Nicole Ashley, make sure to follow Canon Canada and Socality. So you know, because I mean, you know, while we these conversations are nice, they're putting on a really themed workshop around a certain to uh, topic uh, that goes on a lot longer than half an hour. And believe me, having been a part of some of these experiences by Canon, you learn a lot, you leave away with a lot oh. of value. So that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so before we go and listen, guys, for those of you watching, we continue this on Instagram, where you get to be involved in the conversation. It's more of a quick hit key and uh, Q and a, uh, but before we go, Nicole, where can people find your work, support your work? Um, well, on Instagram, it's just at Nicole Ashley and my website is, uh, www. I know I had to like, look up, like I forgot, but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, pandemic times, yeah. uh, www, uh, uh, dot Nicole Ashley dot CA. Nicole Ashley dot CA folks. Look at this. We finally have someone with a dot CA, please support her. Give a hit to that website right away. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you got a couple of shout outs here in the chat as well. So for those of you that were watching on YouTube live, thank you so much. We're going to jump over to Instagram and carry on the conversation there. Thank you so much, Nicole. I'll see you on Instagram. Thank you. See you there.